because I had a major epic failure. I had a great interview with Father Mike. It was so good, you guys. The it content so will never be recaptured again. <laughs> it will never be recaptured This is actually going to be le lower. It's fine, but it's good enough. <laughs> Ooh, it's all about the grace. Okay, so you probably know who Father Mike is. He is um, a famous YouTuber, famous Catholic YouTuber. Uh, my guest, Father Michael Schmitz. He is the chaplain for the Newman Catholic Campus Ministries at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Freezing there, right? Yes. Um, and he also is the director for the Office of Youth Ministry for the Diocese of Duluth, right? We're at the SEEK conference, and what are people seeking? <laughs> <laughs> what Nothing. Are you, we about? Nothing. What are, now, okay, now, now you gave a good answer no, the last yeah, time, so but let's do it again. So, <laughs> um, so we're made on purpose. Okay. We don't always live on purpose. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, even though you have, might have a Catholic who has the worldview that says, okay, God made this world on purpose, God made me on purpose, but then they're still living on accident. So an atheist would say someone who would be like, would be someone who would say uh, that, no, this world is an accident, and I happen to be in existence simply on accident, and so then we default to living on accident. But a Christian, specifically a Catholic Christian, would say, no, God made me on purpose. That means he made me for a purpose, but I don't live on purpose. Okay, so you're saying that most people don't necessarily have a vision for themselves. Right. They just kind of go through life, whatever. Or, or, so, or even like seeking the, like, what is God's vision for my life? Because I think there are a number of people who find that unsatisfactory. To not live on purpose is unsatisfactory. To live reactionary life is unsatisfactory. Yeah. Um, I'm, I like, I'm a planner. I like to have a plan, and yeah. I like to know what God's plan is. But there's that sense of then having the, the next step being... Um, not just what do I want out of life, what's my vision for life, but asking the question, God, if you exist, you made me on purpose, you have a vision for my life. Because God's not, again, sometimes we live um, as if God doesn't exist, or we believe God doesn't exist, therefore it's, it's an accident, but a lot of times we live as if God doesn't exist. So John Paul II, he called that practical atheism, which means that, yes, I checked the box that says I believe God exists, but... Um, for all intents and purposes, I don't live as if God exists. I don't live as if He's involved in my life. I don't live as if He has a purpose for me. And so I don't even ask Him what it is. I just say, well, um, I need to figure this out, so uh, let me ask Tony Robbins, and ask Oprah, and ask Dr. Phil, and they will tell me what my purpose is. As opposed to, let me ask the Lord, and He'll reveal His vision for my life to me. Okay, so Father Mike, what should we do? Yeah, so I think the first thing is... Um, Step one. Yeah, we need to reorient our perspective. And that perspective has to be um, away from living a reactionary life to living a, uh, a life that has vision or seeks vision. That the reality that is... I, there's more to this life than just this life. That's the first thing. I need to be reoriented. The second thing is to allow the Lord to speak in one's life. So someone says, okay, what's God's vision for, vision for my life? Okay, God, go, tell me what your vision is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's me. Yeah, so then, come on. So then be able to so say, okay, me. well, he's already spoken. You know, he's revealed himself through the scripture. He's revealed, so, he revealed himself through the church, through the magisterium. And so there's so much about our lives that has already been revealed. Sometimes people will disqualify themselves. Well, I don't know what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. But you actually do know a lot of what he wants you to do. There's these things called the Ten Commandments. And he says, do these things, don't do these things. Um, there's these things called the Beatitudes, where it says, be like this, not like that. Um, that there's a lot of parameters, a lot of definition mm -hmm. the Lord's already given to us. And right. if we would even just start there, okay, so does you want me to be a nurse or a doctor? Does you want me to be a teacher or a plumber? Like, well, that's coming. The most important thing is not necessarily the events of your story, but the character you become in your story. And that's the huge thing, because I can't always... Uh, control the events of my story. But I am responsible for the person I become in the midst of that story. And so um, that's why I, I just think there's so many times, I was, I was really uh, struck by this, this last fall, um, of driving back to town, uh, our, the city of Duluth, um, as school was about to start. And I was just struck by the reality that at, at a niece who was going off to college for the first time, and I had some students coming back to campus, and I just thought, like, hey, what's their story going to be? And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe this is their last semester of life. Mm -hmm. like, maybe this is the last week of their life. Maybe this, um, maybe there's another 80 years for their lives. I don't know what the story's going to be, but that's not ultimately going to be the most important. 
most important is going to be who are you going to become in the midst of that story. And so again, that's like well, to be a plumber or a teacher. Like, in some ways, who cares? Who are you going to become? Not what are you going to do? So let me ask you about um, the YouTube and how you got in, involved yeah. in that and how you come up with your ideas. Yeah, I got involved with YouTube uh, three years ago or so. I can't believe that it's only been three years. I've been watching two. I don't know. I mean, you're you've just gone way up in terms Thanks. of popularity. I mean, what do you attribute that to? Uh, people's short attention spans. <laughs> and okay, that could be one. Constant distraction. Well, no, I mean, you're just. And I, I mentioned this in the last interview that I feel like your your content is just really fresh and reaching people the questions that they really have in life, the questions that we're all asking. But you have a way of of kind of imparting truth in a way that's not boring and churchy. I mean, I don't know. No, where you. do, where do you come? No, no, yeah. I mean that. No, I, mean, I, uh, I would say that um, the people I've always admired have been people who have taken really complex things that I wanted to know what or wanted to know why and they were able to make it accessible to me. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe the first person who did that for me was Dr. Peter Kraft. Mm -hmm. uh, he was able to take things like Aquinas and like make it so I, oh I get that now. Um, C.S. Lewis, who can mm -hmm. take these massive big ideas and just make it really, really simple and accessible to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Pope Benedict was a lot, is a lot like that too. That um, So I, I love John Paul and I love Pope Benedict both, but I really like Pope Benedict because he made what he was teaching really accessible to a brain like mine. <laughs> and so I always admi have admired those people. Father Benedict Rochelle is another one like that. And so I, I kind of always had that as the model in my head mm -hmm. of um, the people who are really smart and the people who can take big, lofty kind of ideas and make them just accessible. Um, C.S. Lewis, uh, at one point he was giving an address to seminarians and youth ministers. This is an Anglican communion, but um, he, uh, he said that in order to be ordained, you should first have to have, the, your final test before you get ordained, before you get sent out into parishes, should be you're given a topic like uh, the Trinity or a topic like some kind of big thing, the mystery of whatever, the incarnation. And you should be able to translate that into the language of the parish in which you'll be working. He says, if you're going to go be sent off to Burma, you should be able to explain the gospel in Burmese. So if you're going to be sent to the docks uh, outside of London or whatever, in that parish there, you should be able to explain these complicated topics in a way that your normal dock worker could understand. Or else you will not be able to literally speak their language. Well, not literally, but you won't be able to speak their language. And so I've always thought, like, okay, that's the challenge, is how do I understand this well enough and adequately enough to be able to communicate this clearly enough? So are you surprised by um, how many people watch you? I mean, in terms of your reach, in terms of, and in terms of that whole idea of evangelization and using new media. Surprised by how many people, uh, no, because when you have something really, really silly that has 50 million views, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> when I like, say something that hopefully is useful to a couple people, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, but so it's, I mean... People watch anything on YouTube. Oh, I know, so I know. And I'm that's, like, well, in that case. So that's why, like, I guess for, like, my mission is, you know, I feel like we need to be using this new media. Yeah. And they can watch ridiculous stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah but, but, but good. Stuff. But good. But, but yeah. the content's good, and it, 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 it has meaning. Yeah, so I... And I did it because they, people approached me and said, hey, would you be willing to do this? I'm like, oh, I, if you think it'll be helpful. And so I really, you know, I talked to a man earlier today, and he said one of the reasons, he asked me who my favorite character in the Old Testament was, and I said King David. And um, for a number of reasons, he asked me why, I told him why. And then he said, uh, his also was King David, and one of the reasons he really loved King David is because David from a youth was anointed by God to be the king, but then he went back to his job. He went back, went back to being a shepherd. And he waited to be called. So even though he was anointed, he waited until he was called out of that normal daily life. He knew what he was, he knew he was made for the kingdom. He knew he was made for this, this other role to serve the people of God. Um, but he went back to his job that he was given, waited to be called out. And I was like, oh, as he said that, I thought, oh, that's kind of how it happened. How, like, how and then said, say, not to say, like, I've been anointed, but um, that's that idea, right? W, I don't <laughs> have you. any, I don't Sarah, have the, uh... Sarah, Father Mike. Um, <coughs> but, um... A sim somewhat similar in the sense of, okay, I'm just going to keep doing what my bishop has asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And if someone says, hey, would you do this? I'm like, well, that seems to be an option that will be helpful. 
he doesn't take me away from what the bishop asked me to do, then I think I can say yes. That kind of thing. So, so was it, were you afraid, or were you just thinking, oh, I'll, oh, it's just, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Camera, so like, <laughs> Hi, Brittany, my name is Father <laughs> Matrice. This is Essential Presents. I don't know how to do this. I'm just going to start talking. <laughs> but, I mean, I can't believe you're an introvert. I mean, I would never in a million... I mean, but you... How do you do this, then? You just have to talk to a camera. There's nobody else in the room. Like, it's really... It's a great isolating experience. It's yeah, wonderful. I guess I could. I guess I can relate to that. You don't too. talk back. Right. Just that, comments. That, just oh. tractions. That was. A, I'm going to put the link to that because I hope. I, I know they recorded Did it they? last night. Yeah. Okay. I know they recorded it, and um, it was. It was. I mean, honestly, I want to say it was probably one of the best talks. And I'm. A, I've been a Catholic journalist for like 20 years. It's one of the best talks I've heard for anyone for all time. Wow. Even I called you a nerd. Yeah, no, and I was a, I was a nerd because yeah, I wanted to be okay. Right, no, tell I'm not, not going to give it away. No, oh, no, no, okay, I'm using okay. it again. So okay, I'm not, okay. Oh, it was great. It was so, great. But I answered the nerd question in the proper way, and I'm very proud of that. And I was very happy to be yeah. in a very proud, special place. You're proud to be a nerd. Yes, it's true. Okay, so I want to. I'm totally off off topic, but do you want to talk a little bit about distractions since we're kind of distracted? I mean, is that is that too hard for you to whittle down into like a thirty second? No. How do we? Well, I'll say this. How do we have time for God and not be distracted by everything? I would say that distraction is anything that takes you away from what you should be doing at that given, any given moment. So distraction is anything that takes your attention, takes you away from what you should be attentive to or should be doing at any given moment. Because um, there's sometimes when, like, no, no, uh, my my kids are distracting me. Well, no, at this moment I should be attentive to my kids. Um, <laughs> the traffic is distracting, and I'm trying to drive. Like, no, 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 you should be attentive to the traffic when you're trying to drive. Um, but the distraction is anything that takes me away from what I should be attentive to or what I should be present to. So, um, even in a conversation, I should be attentive to the person I'm in a conversation with. If I'm in prayer, it's so easy to have all these other things that take me away. Now, we're going to have distracting thoughts. Our brains are fluid, right? We don't actually hold one thought in place. The brains are constantly moving, so we're constantly in the midst of this, like, bringing our attention back to whatever it is I should be attentive to. And so, um, to see distraction as um, the worst thing, it's not, it's not the case. Distraction is a normal thing that is meant to be worked with to bring us back to what we need to be attentive to is, is going to be just the, the work of any given moment. And so, um, I, one of the things I loved about last night is sharing that quote from self, Mrs. Liguori, where he two ways to lose your soul. One is through mortal sin, the other is through voluntary distraction. And uh, it's like, yeah, okay, so again, what's a distraction? Anything that takes me away from what I should be doing, attentive to at any given moment. And we have someone that needs you. So my guest has been Father Mike, Michael Schmitz. He is an awesome, holy guy. And um, thanks so much for being my guest. And if, if you want more of Father Mike, you can go to bulldogcatholic.org or Ascension Presents and see lots of video. God bless. Peace.